In Photoshop, there's more than one way to balance control and fluidity. And if you've seen this big rock before, it's probably because you watched the previous video. And the technique I'm going to show today is very closely related. So let's start by painting in a new layer here that's just going to represent the shadow of this big rock. And it really doesn't matter what color I pick, so I'm just going to paint it in, focusing on the shape. When I get the shape pretty good through some combination of brush and eraser, that gives me my foundation. So we can call that shape. Now this time, instead of locking the transparent pixels like we did previously, I'm going to make a new layer. And then I'm going to set that layer to a new mode, which is called a clipping mask. So I hold down the Alt key and click on the little divide between the two layers. And now this new layer has kind of jumped to the side a little bit. It's got a little down arrow. This means that when I paint, it's only going to go in the borders of the layer below it. So let me pick a darker color and you can see how that works. So here I'm painting big strokes and clearly they are not going outside of the lines. This is great. If I wanted to, I could make lots of clipping masks. So let's make another one. Again, hold down Alt and click right there. And now I can continue painting and I can do whatever colors I want. And they all are going to stay inside the shape of this underlying layer. So let me make one above the rock. So I'll make a new layer, turn it into a clipping mask. And here I'm just going to paint the rock's shadow. So immediately you might be thinking, okay, this looks exactly like lock transparent pixels. What's the difference? The negative is that here we have lots of extra layers where locking transparent pixels gave me the same benefits, but it didn't have the extra clutter of all these extra layers. So that's one difference. Now on the positive side, these are individual layers. And so if I wanted to say refine the edge of the shadow, I could go to the eraser tool and I could start carving out this edge. So if you're used to using what I call temp layers or temporary layers, clipping masks are really nice because you can make big strokes and then carve away what you don't want. And all the while, it's still being controlled by the shape of that original layer, the rock shape in this case. Another upside is that because they are individual layers, you get a little more fine grain control. So if we look here in the rock, there's kind of these orange bits on the left side. Well, maybe I want to paint those on their own. So I'll make a new layer, set that to be a clipping mask. I'll select an orange color like that. And then I can go in here and paint those orange marks. And if I've painted too much, I can erase away. And that's because this is a separate layer. We can see here layer seven is one of two clipping masks that are both on top of the big rock. And so in this way, you could continue adding a new clipping mask for each extra element you wanted to add. And then you could modify each of them individually. Like here, I can click back on this shadow edge layer and I can shape that. And then if I wanted to change the overall silhouette shape, all I need to do is go down to the rock itself and I can erase away if I want to. And you can see that as I change the shape of that original rock, all of the clipping masks are also updating. Really, they just look down the layer stack until they see a normal layer or a non-clipping mask, and they'll use that layer as the shape boundary. And it doesn't need to be connected either. I could, for instance, add a little extra rock right here. And as long as it's on the same layer, even though there's a bit of airspace in between, all of these clipping masks will also paint on it, but not outside the lines. So you're essentially having one layer to determine the shape you want to paint inside of. And then the clipping masks above it allow you to paint within that shape. So which is better? Clipping masks or the previous example that I gave where you painted on single layers and just locked the transparent pixels? In my opinion, really, the difference is just how much stuff happens in the layer palette. Clearly, as I add clipping masks here, I just get a taller layer stack. But with that taller layer stack comes finer control. So what I find myself doing in practice is looking for situations that are simple and quick. In those cases, I just lock transparent pixels. But that's kind of the quick and easy way. But if I want to do something that has a little more complexity, or that I need to be a little bit more careful with, or maybe has multiple components, 
clipping masks are a great way to go. So experiment with both of these techniques, and then in the final video in this little mini-series, we're going to look at why keyboard shortcuts matter so much for these techniques. Have fun painting!